nine. It's time for a discussion on opinion courts. We welcome your views on our discussion. Please use the SMS line 22422. You could tweet us or Facebook us on Twitter. Reach us at Citizen TV Kenya or at Citizen TV News and the respective uh, Facebook pages. Or you could reach me directly at Anne Kiguta. That's Anne with an E. Let's cross over now to Hussein Mohammed, who will set the stage for our discussion tonight. Hussein. Right, and of course, uh, this stems from the Deputy President William Ruto's directive, of course, with the blessing uh, of President Uhuru Kenyatta. He's also been talking about it uh, in recent days. And of course, what they are saying is not what they just wish to happen. This is anchored in law. That is the Kenya National Examination Council uh, Act 29 of 2012, which outlaws uh, withholding of certificates by any institution uh, or individual. And let's just see or take a look at what the President has been saying in recent days. Lakini hakuna haja ya kusumbua mtoto. Wacha mtoto aendelee na maisha yake. Wewe kama kuna pesa ambayo imekosekana hapa na pale wewe headmaster njoo tuongee tujue vile mambo haya tutatengeneza. How can any reasonable person withhold a certificate from an already disadvantaged kid whose parents cannot afford and we compound that problem by denying them their certificates. The head teachers are willing to release this certificate like as soon as practically possible. But would want to raise the concerns that are going to come now in the schools as a result of the implementation of this directive. One, sooner you are now going to start seeing uh, auctioneering of school property because the the debts that are there, when people we owe the money come to learn that now there is no source where we are going to get this other fund, they are likely now to react. You are soon going to see a lot of schools now taken to court by sundry creditors. Right, and now, of course, uh, the debts he's talking about amount to an estimated 14 billion shillings. Uh, it somewhat got the uh, school heads off guard because this law has always been there. It's just that it has not been implemented. Uh, so the problem is actually with the implementation. Uh, the school heads want to know or want to know how, they, how they'll be compensated with their arrears amounting to about 14 billion shillings. The vagueness with which the government is handling this and is where the problem is uh, the circular from Education Cabinet Secretary, uh, Professor Jacob Kemeni, did not talk about settling uh, the school arrears or school fees that haven't been paid to, up to now. And again, going back to what the President Kenyatta said, some have also been talking, uh, talking about it jokingly. And if I may quote the President saying, release the certificates, then kujeni tuonge. So what they are saying is, how do you just go and meet the President? And where do you talk to the President? Shouldn't the government have talked to them fast, Anne? But then again, Anne, it's also anchored in law. Hussein, thank you for that. Uh, very clearly put there, Hussein Mohammed from the newsroom. And uh, I want to turn to my panel now and uh, begin from the question that uh, the deputy president posed, which is how can any reasonable person, Mr. Socion, withhold a certificate from an already needy student, knowing full well the NEC Act, which says certificates or diplomas shall not be withheld from the candidate by any person or institution, and that's section 101B. Uh, number one, one thing that must be appreciated is that uh, the principals and teachers and schools have uh, played a reasonable role to allow learners to go through the school system without any interference. Mm -hmm. That's a very great concession and is a great act of benevolence and while going through the school system uh, there are services and consumables that have been uh, invested and expended and this is majorly through the credit services that we get through the suppliers and through all the understanding with the suppliers but then the practical fact mm -hmm. in all institutions globally mm -hmm. is that students must actually really clear from the school before being issued finally with a certificate. Uh, we welcome the directive because the indication that uh, the w government will be willing to pay. But then we were not involved in the formulation of the directive 
because I believe uh, the presidency cannot issue a directive without advice from the line ministry. Mm. And uh, before that advice was, was given from the line ministry, then definitely we were not involved. That's number one. Number two, mm -hmm. the Act, K Kenya National Examination Council Act 2012-12 is explicit. And we would be more than willing to release these certificates, but we would like to engage in a professional procedure. Once an act of parliament is in force, to operationalize the act of parliament, there must be regulations. And therefore, Kenya National Examinations Council should have gone a step further mm -hmm. to develop regulations so that it guides on how each and every clause of the act is to be implemented. But to this stage, uh -huh. that is lacking. Okay. But then, that is not our contest. Mm -hmm. uh, where we are at the moment is that a directive has been issued. Mm -hmm. We are not opposed to the directive, mm -hmm. but we would like to engage in a more civil process of uh, uh, releasing these certificates. Because number one, students must clear. Number two, we must look at the impact and the consequences of the same on the continuing students. Okay, hold on, hold on a minute. I want to interrogate some of the things that you've already um, elaborated. And the first is while schools, quote unquote, have been uh, benevolent in allowing the students to continue with their education, it really doesn't serve a purpose if at the end of the day they do not live with a certificate because they're not able to pursue further education such as tertiary education. Yeah, but, but, they but can't go to university, no, they can't go to a training true. college. And uh, the truth of the matter is somebody should have interrogated and carried out a mm. clear situation analysis. In situations where students uh, would have intended to proceed for further studies, mm. uh, I don't think we have held these certificates. We've done a lot to ensure that uh, these students are able to access their certificates and proceed with their studies. The certificates we are holding, the students have never come back for them. We've never denied. But then, nevertheless, somebody also should have assessed the impact of the same. Because, number one, schools are already closing down before the end of the term. The creditors have stopped giving, delivering supplies to the school. And that is a disaster in the waiting. Mm -hmm. Number three, there is a, a predicted high complacency that even third term, parents will not be able to pay school fees because they know uh, the directive is write the examination and get your okay. certificate. So it will encourage and more default in your opinion? It will encourage okay. more default and where we are headed to is very great disaster and as we are speaking here, the morale of the principals is so much down and we have taken very critical steps and measures we've written to the cabinet secretary to invite us for a meeting so that we can discuss the implementation of the directive. Okay. I, I want to bring in the rest of the panel and I, I should add to my viewers that we did reach out to the Ministry of Education uh, to send a representative, but unfortunately no one was available to be here. Janet, let me come to you. Withholding a certificate doesn't really guarantee schools, though, that they're going to be paid at all. So is the, is the question that we are perhaps not looking at the bigger problem in terms of how to deal with our needs students yeah and I think um, a lot of the sentiments that have been expressed by um, uh, Socion are correct in terms of um, uh, what are we looking at in the first place and I think it's wrong for for everybody to be led to imagine that uh, we are looking at a, at, at a directive that does not that has not come from anywhere mm -hmm. I think the process of developing the Kenya National Examinations Council Act was was fully consultative and went through the entire process until it was enacted into law so we are we are debating here as to whether we can uh, we, we want to implement a law mm -hmm. um, that that we've put through our structures and I think for me that is disastrous because the idea is we must uh, we, we must respect the law because a bad law is law anyway. Mm. So having said that, and then, and, then, and then you're looking at the situation like uh, what Socion is expressing, where are the regulations, for example, so that we can now say that the, the, the Na Kenya National Examinations Council Act is fully operational. So you're looking at why would we wait until the deputy president mm -hmm. is the one coming in to give directives about uh, the Ministry of Education implementing its own laws. So I think there's a problem there. And, and, and given that the NEC Act is not new, mm -hmm. it's an act of October 2012. Mm -hmm. So what is new now? Mm -hmm. And, 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 and if the Ministry of Education is coming out clear to say, since we enacted this act, there, there, there are no certificates that have been withheld. I think we are looking at a, at, at a loss here. But then again, uh, listening to the amount of figures, 
that we are quoting in terms of, 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 of the fee areas. Mm -hmm. um, uh, th there was a child the other day that was talking about 300,000 Kenya mm -hmm. shillings. Mm -hmm. And so if you're withholding anyone's certificate that they owe you 300,000 Kenya shillings and you actually want them to pay you before you give them their certificate, I don't think that is, that is right. So there's also the second issue. Where, how did we get there? How did we get, for example, to a situation where we can have school fees worth 300,000 and who will pay? I can guarantee you everybody will default and we will withhold all the certificates. Mm -hmm. So I think the problems are even with controls. Because if you're telling a parent that you have to pay 300,000, they don't even have hope that if I sell a cow, I can be able to get that. Mm. So, but if you're talking about a decent figure of about 40,000, mm -hmm. then there can be hope. That at so least it's not can helpful, raise the amount in, in your money. opinion, in the first place, that schools even allow it to get to that level? Uh, it's just okay. not at all. All right. All. Prof, what do you think of what you've heard? I think the first thing is that uh, I'm in shock, especially with what Secretary General has said about the teachers, head teachers being benevolent enough to allow the students to study. Mm -hmm. These schools are national schools. They are government schools. The question of being sympathetic, that is not their school. So really, the, the duty of uh, providing education in this country belongs to the, go the government. Mm -hmm. These are just agents, and the agents seem more concerned about uh, the running of schools than their employer. That just tells you what goes on in the schools. Most of the money they are demanding, if mm -hmm. you look at, at it over the years, is money which even has levied, uh, uh, where they have punished parents, asked parents to pay some money, which is not even approved. So even when you do a good audit, mm -hmm. it will just expose the greediness of and the corruption that you find among high school heads. So that figure could come down. But There's what a problem with the fee structure, you're saying? Yes, there are levies which are not approved, but they have been added as fees after the students uh, leave. That has to be addressed. But having said that, I would like to, I would like to say this. The starting point for, for us to discuss this issue is the Constitution. For the first time in this country, uh, since the... The, the, the Uhuru administration took power. I, I, I saw this, the voice of Uhuru and, and Ruto trying to look back to the Constitution. They are cornered in a situation where, if you look at Chapter 4 of the Constitution on the Bill of Rights, mm -hmm. education is a right. Mm -hmm. And they do not want to abet in criminology uh, by engaging, you know, working with the school heads to deny children their education. So what the, 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 the government seems to be doing, in my interpretation, is to make sure that the constitution is followed by giving the children the the what the the the, the 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 opportunity to learn. But secondly, therefore, now when it says let us talk about it, I think what the government seems to be arguing is let the head teachers, including Secretary General, propose ways. I read some something uh, associated with him. Uh, probably they misquoted you, which said, you, you, you seemed to say that we need to have a national lottery on education. So they want a proposal because this is a short term measure. We want a proposal on how we can fund high school education. Mm -hmm. And once we get that proposal in place, we shall have a long term uh, program. But this idea of withholding the, the certificates is unconstitutional, and I think that is where Ruto and Ahur found themselves, and they thought that somebody could take them to court. But in the meantime, Professor, what, what happens to schools? Because the picture Sosion is painting is that they have to pay suppliers. No, they th may be threatened by being closed down. These are, these are threats. In fact, you, if you mm -hmm. look at them, mm -hmm. the school heads have a lot of money around them, which, which goes to wrong uses. They have levied wrong, wrong, fee, wrong fees which is not approved, and they, they, they now threaten the government. This is blackmail. Mm -hmm. I don't think that a government worth its salt is going to allow a school like Alliance High School, mm -hmm. a school like Musingo High School, mm -hmm. to be auctioned, and uh, it will have no, no capacity to stay. Janet, quickly is, before Sosiano yeah, responds. I think, the, the, let's, I think let's stop exaggerating mm -hmm. some of these issues. Yes. Yes. Because if you have kept a certificate in the shelf for five years, yes. mm -hmm. and your school has not been auctioned, I am not sure... Uh, giving that certificate away will make the school the auction. Yeah. So I think there's some exaggerations here that we need to check, and especially in the greater good. What are we doing to this learner that we are saying we are withholding your certificate, you cannot even access any form of employment, you cannot even uh, access any college. So the greater good is what we want to look at here. And anyway, as he says, the schools are the responsibility of the Ministry of Education. Not Where the implementer of the policy gets more concerned than the owner of the policy, mm -hmm. then there's a problem there. They want Let's, to pocket uh, this money and respond. take the, that money home. Yes, properly. Yes, That's why they are over concerned. Well, I appreciate the divergent views. I think more most of the views are based on absolute ignorance on how schools are run. Like you need uh, 
to be in a school system to know exactly what happens. No, the no, moment no, you no, admit a student, the, the, the moment you admit a student, I have to correct that. The moment you admit a student, I have a degree in education. I have a degree in education. I have taught in teachers' colleges. You cannot tell me that no, I have ignorance for, about the, for the way schools are run. Fair enough, Professor. Yeah, let's let, let make well. it I, I have, have qualification in education. Your point is come for civic contest, but you have come to analyze facts. Once you admit a student, that student must be fed that student mm -hmm. uh the the learning tools you mm -hmm. must purchase mm -hmm. and all oh, oh, there's a basic. lot there's a lot of cost that goes into it so to generalize and talk about corruption i think that will be far-fetched we want to be extremely realistic that budgets are generated there are seven thousand schools and uh, learners are sustained and uh, in fact very many schools have even developed endowment accounts and raised money to assist these particular learners and moving so fast and talking about the current constitution i don't think the current constitution has reached and even this country has reached a level of full free education uh the kenyan system is still at the level of total cost sharing the public government and public government is the saying in the next three years they think uh, secondary education uh, will be absolutely I, I, I think, think uh, we have to put matters into perspective no, I, I think the fact the we truth of the matter the truth of the matter yeah, the truth of the matter we are in the month of we are in the month of july mm -hmm. and government has not even wired the total money that is required for second term the fact is kenyan system is still operating on what you would call the washington model mm -hmm. of cost sharing public government and public parent but the constitution envisages a totally free mm -hmm. the nordic system and we are not yet there and while we are still at this stage of the transition mm -hmm. we must be practical and realistic with the situation and yes. and uh, i'm reading some suspicion from you that you do not in fact believe that government will actually pay uh, these monies, the 14 billion, is that correct? No, 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 we are not against that. That is why Do we have said very clearly. Uh, we believe because they gave a directive, and that is why we are asking for a meeting before the certificates are released. Mm -hmm. We want to sit with the Minister of Education, mm -hmm. carry out a situation analysis, do a clear audit, know how many certificates are held, mm -hmm. and against how much fees, and what government is ready to pay, and uh, what is the strategy that the government has. That is all what we need. We need a meeting so that we do a very factual and scientific situation analysis mm -hmm. rather than getting sensational and uh, 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 and, and, uh, and right. yes, yes. Yes, yes yes yeah mm -hmm. and I, I think also it's 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 it's, a, it's fair for us to say that the government also has not been very committed one to funding uh for the secondary education because as much as we are saying because i saw the deputy president committing that in the near future education education is going to be absolutely free but if you cl critically analyze the amount of investment the government has done over time mm -hmm. and especially the just uh, red budget mm -hmm. the government only increased uh, their location to computation uh, by, by three thousand three thousand yeah. only mm -hmm. palana mm -hmm. and so for me the government is not putting out a uh, real commitment that can even call uh, you know trust from the heads of the very institutions yeah. and even like for example if you look at ordinary things like for example ensuring that the monies are wired in good time the government can still not deliver that so cl clearly nobody mm -hmm. can trust that even the resources and, and today i was seeing um, contradicting opinions because um, the deputy president and the president are saying come and discuss with us but then again what is happening at school level is that and i and i saw the ps saying that um, uh, the, the parents i mean the principals and the learners should come up with a framework as to how, how so i think uh, i think the government also is not fairly handling this matter and it, it, it's it's really critical because we are saying the prime the public primary schools are totally dysfunctional mm -hmm. why because of cash crisis mm -hmm. and that, that that's the truth of the matter that is where we are graduating people who are 100 and so on do we want to extend the same confusion at I secondary school level and i think my answer is no so the idea is as much as government is stressing on these partnerships between parents and everybody else mm -hmm. can the government lead from the front by first investing in education and seriously so mm -hmm. and ensuring timeliness to these disbursements because i want to ask the government today mm -hmm. are they sure that there is any business transacting in, in schools yeah. there is no money so what business is transacting in good schools? question i wish they were here to uh, answer yes, professor but, yes but the, the point is this mm. we agree that the government should do more and i think i can i think they, they haven't done as as well as they should do but what do you really think when the government invites the teachers to come and discuss mm -hmm. there are hard questions to be answered such and, as, uh, such as Mm -hmm. You hold a very expensive annual heads association conference on on the account of of, of poor students. 
part of the money that the you one are, in Mombasa? Yes. No, I think it, the, that's no, not on no, the ground. No, no, wait. The, this is one of the questions. Let me finish this point. I'll give you a chance. Rob, it's not No, 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 wait, wait, wait. The heads conference. No. The heads conference. I've not even said anything. We can't tell The heads conference. You are defending your constituents. He could finish his point and then you respond. You are finishing your constituency. I mean, fees, part of the money. Government does not give out money. Head teachers subscribe to the to the to the National Heads Association. Where do they get money? Is it from their pocket? These are, these are questions that we really the government is wants to answer. Then secondly, how has been the financial management of these schools over the years? How much money has been lost through fraudulent deals? I think those are the questions that the government is inviting them to talk to justify the figure fourteen. But if that is not justified, mm -hmm. then the, the government is likely to ask that part of the solution would for you to forego some of the things you have been doing and surrender this money to pay the school fees. So that is the, the, the basic thing. But the second most important point is this, that the, the Constitution does not envisage what he calls free education. But it says that children have a right to education as a basic right. Mm -hmm. Now, how you get that right implemented is also has got to do with how you raise money. We can still raise money without punishing these poor children to fund education. So it's not that we are saying the Constitution is still in the Washington mode. Right. No. Okay, it's I'll allow Mr. Sosian so, uh, to respond so before uh, we go away, to your final views. Away from theoretical issues and uh, uh, imaginations that I would think are largely misguided. Number one, the heads conferences are financed through the monthly subscriptions by the head teachers themselves through their salaries. It is not financed by the school money. Number two, we are not here talking about uh, misappropriation. We are talking about releasing of certificates. And if it is about misappropriation, mm -hmm. the Ministry of Education has a strong audit system. Mm -hmm. And if there is one or two principals mm -hmm. who misappropriates money, mm -hmm. then he has to answer. Thirdly, mm -hmm. uh, we are taking the sector into a lot of confusion. And it's good when you get down to figures. Uh, what really is the level of government commitment in this? We'd like to encourage government mm -hmm. to commit itself and to release even the money on time. But there are facts and questions that really we need to know. Number one, when we talk about uh, the free secondary education, for example, mm -hmm. being raised by uh, 35 percent, mm -hmm. and that rise of 35 percent will even uh, cover the neck, uh, neck examination fee, that rises to something like 13,500, yet the examination per child in, at KCSE level is uh, 6,000. Mm -hmm. Then we really wonder uh, where, where we are going to get these figures, okay. a gap of 3,000. Mm -hmm. There are a lot of questions and a lot of issues, and we think the ministry is better placed and the minister has gone into hiding. We've written to them. We've asked for a simple thing. I, I have for a, a question for Mr. Sosion. A, 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 a short question, a short question yes. for him, because this is important. Okay. And we, 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 we need corrections here. Okay. I have in my position correspondence mm. asking head teachers to attend conferences in some places from Zono to what used to be provincial level, then the nationals. The letter starts by saying you are invited to attend this meeting and then liars with your respective BOGs to facilitate you to attend the meeting. So when you have a secretary general like this, he's a very respected person and he's telling a lie in national tele on national television that the head teachers put out Professor. the money. Who sponsors these people? Who do, who do travel allowance and everything? <laughs> these are please. some of the money that come, comes from oh, please, please poor students. Prof. Prof. Fair enough. And these uh, questions must be sorted out no, before no, you even hold on, go back please, to the please discussion. I, I, I want us to, to wind up because we must. Your point has been made, Professor. Thank you for that. And so soon you've responded, please. <laughs> so in, in your final views, yes. very quickly, yeah. what is the way forward in as far as this directive is concerned? Do you think it can be operationalized? What's the way forward? Very quickly, I'll begin with the lady. Yeah, thank you. And I think um, very, very quickly, mm -hmm. we are telling government mm -hmm. it is a move in the right direction mm -hmm. because um, thinking pro poor and thinking about the poorest of the poor who cannot uh, afford mm -hmm. all these escalated school fees and all that, it's really a good move. 
but principles need to be supported. If there are those concerns that probably there are issues that need to be discussed, we also saying that it is not good to politicize mm -hmm. education issues. Mm -hmm. I think then the, the government uh, think of modalities mm -hmm. as to how some of these debts can be can can also be achieved. Mm -hmm. But also say that it has become very difficult in this sector mm -hmm. to operate, and partly say that uh, Socion and his group are responsible for that because you cannot politicize everything else. Mm -hmm. So let's let's identify the issues that are welfare and the issues that are policy. And for once, say I. I admire the government because of being bold and leading in giving the policy right. direction and rally all of us behind the policy of government. Right, thank you for your views. Sure. Sosian, your final uh, views. Uh, yes, my, my views are, are very clear and simple. Number one, we are not opposed to the directive. That's a presidential directive and I believe it is well informed. Number two, we need a meeting to discuss the implementation modalities. Let government tell us how it's going to tackle the whole issue because from uh, from the statement uh we are getting it that uh it's government that will foot the the the, the, the cost mm -hmm. of the fee arrears mm -hmm. because this is money that is due to the creditors creditors and suppliers who are threatening to cut off supplies to school mm -hmm. and uh, this is giving a real threat number two we must also ensure prudence and discipline that even the continuing students continuing parents uh do not fall into a kingdom of complacency. They must continue uh, meeting the obligations. These are critical issues, okay. and therefore, for us, we have asked for a very simple thing. Amazing. And we have not asked it through the media. We've yes. written yes. in black and white to the cabinet secretary yes. to ask for a meeting. And uh, if the ministry is going into hiding, then uh, we, we might decide and take a very strong position as from <laughs> and give that. Oh my, this is not a teacher welfare matter. No, 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 it's not, this is, not a teacher welfare matter. It's no, 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 a policy it's of policy. government. So policy implements I thank you both. I must ask you both to be quiet. You must appreciate that it's the principle who will implement it. Yes, it's not a welfare issue, Professor. It's not a teacher welfare issue. Just two quick things. The threat of creditors. Yeah. Actually, he said, final uh, views. Yes, final the, views. The creditors are principals themselves. So go go home with that joke and uh, think about it. But uh, what I want to do, to say <laughs> is this: that uh, in, indeed, mm -hmm. we need a new policy mm -hmm. on funding of higher education, and uh, it needs everybody's input. It is mm -hmm. not just the principals mm -hmm. with the government. Once we do that, we shall. We could even. Uh, uh, tax people in a particular way and say we want to fund education so that we don't see this miserable state that we are seeing our kids mm -hmm. in. But for now, principals should release certificates as directed by government and then discuss with the government. I want to thank you all for your very animated and fantastic views. It's been such a pleasure hosting you all on the show. Thank you for coming. We're taking a short break. We'll be back with more after this.